Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tax. It's been a while since I've posted, but today we are going to be working on the Ford Expedition because I'm taking the camper and I'm getting the hell out of town for a while because my family's going stir crazy staying in the house. So let's jump into this video and I'll show you what I'm doing and what I've been up to. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Lately this year's been crazy, uh, been busy, busy, busy. The last uh, couple of uh, months, I guess, we had a ton of snow in Chicago, so busy with that, playing in the snow with my family. From there, we had a crazy cold, just like the whole nation did. And then my house started uh, creaking and cracking and I got roof leaks everywhere because of all that snow, that ice damming. So I've been doing some home repairs, and then on top of that, it's tax season, so I'll be doing taxes and all that fun stuff. But anyways, now the sun is shining, it is nice to stand outside again, so I am going to be doing some modifications to the Ford Expedition. This is my recovery backpack I keep in my Expedition, and I have another one for my Jeep Gladiator. Inside there is straps, pulleys, all the good things to help self-recover. I did buy some uh, Factor 55 rope repair kits, uh, another hitch mount, um, uh, a shackle there, a rope shackle. So I'm just going to organize those in the bag. The links for all of this stuff are below if you're interested. Now, the trailer I have there does have a heavy tongue. For some reason, this Micro Mini uh, 2306, I think their tongue weight is a bit of a lie. But on top of that, I also added extra water tanks, so there is more tongue weight. That being said, this is the FX4 that has the softest suspension in the rear. Not many options to uh, beefing that up. So what I did order are some sumo springs. Basically, these go in, the, in between the coils to stop the sagging when you're towing. I'm sure they hinder off-road ability, but most of the time I will be towing that more than off-road. So I am going to be installing those. Now this trip that I'm going on, it looks like the weather is going to be a hit and miss, maybe some rain, some snow, and that does not help me when I'm boondocking and when I have solar power system on here. You see, solar power needs the sun. If there's no sun, I have no power. So what I've done is I've installed this power cable that actually can charge the batteries from the alternator here when I'm driving. I do have a generator back there in case everything doesn't work. But that being said, I need to hook up that auxiliary power cable from the battery all the way to the rear. So we will be installing this today as well. And when installing this, I have two 500 amp uh, reset breakers. So I'm gonna install one for here. And then when I installed my winch, I actually had a battery cutoff I installed. I'm gonna replace this with the breaker. Now when I plan my trips, I tend to do it on an app called uh, In Route. I choose my whole route for the whole trip, and from there I sprinkle around, around little pins of uh, interests, let's say, along the route, in case you know the family needs to get out and stretch and so on, or just a good thing we wanna see. So I don't wanna constantly be on my phone, and also phone's a tiny little screen, so I have an iPad mount that we will be setting up. Uh, on the passenger seat that faces the driver. Um, I haven't seen one on the Expedition yet, so hopefully this will help you guys if you do um, overlanding. Now those are the more important things I want to install. If I have time, there's a couple other things. So if you've seen some of my other videos, you've known I have done a headlight bulb upgrade here. The, the standard lights, I don't have the LED package on the Expedition, they are terrible. I mean, it's you may not have lights on. I replaced them with some $20 bulbs, not too happy with them, so I bought this combo kit. They're about $120, uh, so I'm going to, if I have time, replace those with these. On top of that, put an Amazon Echo in there because I like listening to Pandora and it's nice just to say, play Pandora. Then I have a dash camera. Uh, I've always had a dash camera in my car. Maybe I can get something cool or maybe, you know, it'll help me out one day if I get in a crash. And then lastly, I have a Factor 55, uh, what is this one called? This is called the Flat Link Expert that I want to replace with the OEM worn hook there. So those are all extras I will do if I have time. It is a beautiful day. Uh, I don't think anything is on any scale of difficulty. 
but it does take time. So let's jump right into the first project, which is going to be packing the backpack so I can put it back in the truck and then onto the sumo springs. These are not cheap by any means. They are very expensive, but I figured it's worn. It's gonna have the price tag anyway, but it is uh, gonna have everything I need. Anyways, I keep some gloves in there. Well, the gloves come in there. Uh, we got a long strap, a strap to go around a tree. We got some shackles, we got a pulley. That's what we have in here. Um, link will be down below for this thing. It has everything you need. Obviously, I'm just adding to it uh, in case I need anything else while I'm on the road. Oh, by the way, this thing is heavy. <laughs> I would say close to 50, 60 pounds. Alrighty, for demonstration purposes, this is uh, my spring off my gladiator that I'm gonna lift, I haven't done it yet. But basically, this needs to go on, obviously the rear spring, the rear spring on this uh, expedition is about a, a quarter of this size, uh, as far as the height goes. But you fit it in, basically you wrap it around here, and it, it fits right in the spring, like that. And then it reduces the amount of uh, boinginess, if you will. So hopefully it's that easy of an install and to keep it in here, I mean, it's kind of tacky. You just use zip ties, there are holes in there and it zip ties right in place. It shouldn't be hard as long as there's this much space. That's why I'm leaving the wheel on to help pull the suspension down to stretch out the spring. So let's jump into installing these. All right, so I'm just gonna wipe down these springs quick. So I have lubricated with some whatever tire soap the bottom i mean the top the bottom i'm gonna try keep in the channel already i'm gonna set the bottom in and then try push this top in okay yeah that worked perfect you hear that click nice all right so they say this needs to overlap one and a half inches to about here but i ordered the one for my truck and this is how it looks uh, so that is what it is. Now I'm just gonna put some zip ties around here and I will get to the other side. Alrighty, the sumo springs are in. Uh, I'm not gonna know the difference until I hook up the trailer. But now let's jump on to installing this bad boy and these fuses. So uh, yeah, let's do that. All right guys, well that took a hot minute. Let me show you what I have done with the power cable in the back. Uh, but firstly, here is the wiring here. So this is my winch setup. I had the, the battery terminal first. Now I got these 500 amp uh, breakers. Very hard to find, I'll put a link down below. So this is uh, the, obviously when it's tripped. Uh, that's the winch. I kept this cable black here so I can visually just remember that that's, uh, the winch obviously is gonna do the positive. And then this is the power to the back. So you can leave them on all the, all the time. Mm it is a breaker so that's good so it's all secure down there let's take it to the back see what I did so most SUVs now have this uh, cover that goes in here so I just mounted it right here um, so I can be plugged into the trailer brakes here and then the power here so that should be set to go now let's jump on to well Firstly, I'm gonna do a mid-session cleanup. You know, I've mentioned this a couple times if you uh, have watched my channel. You get all these tools. That project took a bunch of tools, so I'm gonna clean it all up, throw away all the scrap crap. Uh, here's all the tools I needed to uh, do all of this, which seems like a lot, but that's what it takes. Uh, I'm gonna do a mid-tool cleanup. Then we're gonna jump into unboxing this RAM mount for the iPad for the inside. So let's jump into that. And let me show you what I'm working with here. Here is the RAM mount. I need to loosen the chair mount under there. And then the iPad can sit right here so I can, uh, you know, navigate. Um, normally the seat is empty because my wife sits in the back with the kids. Um, but even 
or when we're using the car, not on a trip, I can take this pole off and not have this whole giddy up there and just leave them out there. So I think this will work perfectly. Well guys, today's projects are simple, but they're just taking some time. So the mount I got wasn't the F-150 mount, it was a universal mount. The F-150 mount I think was like 400 bucks or something, I can't remember, but that's... I remembered I didn't get that. That being said, the universal mount, you needed a lot of modifications. I cut a bunch of steel off to make it better. Um, but here it is. So it mounts under there, so there's no holes getting drilled. The one thing this will do is bounce a lot. Uh, I don't want to add a, a, a hole or, or mount there. So what I'm going to do is, firstly, because my wife wants space in the back when she's sitting, because she sits back here. If I just push this up against there, it should reduce the amount of jiggle when I'm driving, if you will. So let's check it out from the driver's side. And look, if this trip it's too bouncy, then I'll figure out another solution uh, by bracing that. But uh, I guess here's the cockpit, if you will. Um, and then I will, I, I think I'll have it vertical. Uh, but I guess I have seen a lot of people use it uh, Sideways, I don't know, but it seems you know relatively sturdy I'm pushing it pretty hard, so I'll have to see Anyways on to the next project. Well, I think let's knock off uh, the winch uh, hook and the sun guard or the rope guard and then we'll move on to something else all right, note to self, uh, I have the wireless uh, remote for the winch. Haven't used it since I installed it. The battery's dead, so good thing I saw that now because when I need it and the battery's dead, that's pointless. So I'm charging that. Let's jump onto the actual headlights. Uh, let's upgrade them. I have done just the right side of the headlight and the, well, the low beam and the high beam. I'm not gonna do the right side. I wanna drive around tonight and see if, you know, four times the price makes a difference. But uh, we'll find out, I guess, tonight. Hey guys, so the right side has the new bulbs and the left side doesn't. Uh, it's got the first round of upgrades. And I think I can tell that the right side is better. But then again, I think I can't tell. I mean, I kind of want to drive in the middle of the road. I'm going to get pulled over. I mean, it looks like it's lighting up equally. I mean, on the camera, it actually shows up a lot more that the left is darker. Alrighty, so I've pulled up to my garage here. Uh, it does look brighter on the right. Let's do the right, all the brights. Yeah, it's definitely brighter on the right. I don't know how easy you can tell. Like right here, it's less bright and more blurry over here. It's much brighter and sharper. Just focus. Now on to the dash camera. I had this one installed on my uh, 2017 F-150, which is exactly the same interior at least the front portion. So right down here is a fuse panel. That's where I'm gonna hook up uh, the wire. I'll figure out which area to go. Run it all the way down and then put the dash cam up in the front. Um, I like this dash cam. It's got a front and a rear camera. Uh, anyways, there'll be a link down below. Oh, if you wanna do this, I'll find this as well. You need to put this Spy Tech hardware kit um, because you know these normally plug into the cigarette socket. Uh, this it replaces that little uh, box thingy when you're hardwiring it. So you need this little box thingy. Anyways, I'm gonna hook that up and go from there. All right, dash camera is in. Let me show you. All right, so there's the dash camera. I'll keep it there. Uh, obviously, I wired it up down and inside here. Let me get my light. So, exact same as my Ford Explorer or Ford uh, F-150. I grounded it here and I just tapped it into a fuse over there. I put it into the heating steering, heated steering wheel fuse. Uh, that way it only turns on with ignition. This dash camera does have batteries and it does uh, activate if like someone bumps into your car. 
uh, when everything's off and you're parked. So that's good. So I don't need it on continuously since it has an internal battery. Anyways, next project quick. Uh, I'm gonna hook up the Factor 55. Let's get that going. I have installed uh, the flat link. Now this is an optional extra piece if you want to protect your rope from chafing. They have these rubber things there to look all good and dandy. Um, but this is a rope guard that goes right there. Um, and you use those compression nails to put them on. And that uh, protects the rope from sun damage and chafing and so on. So I'm gonna install that now. All right, so this is what the compression uh, nail looks like, I guess, when you knock it down, it expands. It's not focusing. I just loosely fit it in there. I'm gonna use a punch and a mallet to knock them in. Uh, it's pretty cool to actually give another sticker in case your setup is upside down there. So I will put that on later. All right, well guys, that is gonna do it for today. I am going to obviously put in a clip of which lights are better and I'll let you know in the description below. Um, but yeah, I'm done filming for today. I will film that later and just put it in the edit. It is getting chilly now, but we got a lot done today. Tomorrow, I've got a couple of things to get ready on the camper that uh, I need to fix and change. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see. And then after this whole trip, I'm gonna go over the whole camper. Everything I've done, I've got about 400 hours in this thing. Uh, I know it's getting camper season soon, so hopefully people can learn from everything I've done. It's basically not a thing I haven't done on that thing, but um, what next on the expedition? I want to get a proper roof rack. Uh, Baja Forge makes one, so I might order that. But all in all, I think the expedition is now done. Uh, Ford does have Alexa built in. I just remembered that. I need to see if that works, then I won't put this Alexa in. I can put it in my Jeep. Um, but yeah, anyways, thanks a lot for tuning in, and until next time guys, I will see you then. Thank you.